My first introduction to the pause button was in 1971. I went to a seminar I didn't want to be at to please somebody I was with. Well, it wasn't a seminar, it was a church service, but it was very much a seminar in how this thing works. And the speaker that day said, and I went because my kid's dad really wanted to go there. He wanted to go on that Sunday, and I said no, and I slept in. And he came back and said, that first service was so great, come with me for the second service. And because I had agreed to work on that marriage, I said, okay. And I got up and I went. And the minister that day said, nothing is bad unless you think it's bad. I'm 22 years old. You might remember your 22-year-old self. <laughs> We're pretty sure about everything. Think it's bad unless you think it's bad? Sure. I said, come on, inside myself. I'm going, I know I crossed my arms. It was like, come on. Car wrecks are bad, murder's bad, war is bad, hello. <laughs> and then he said, the next thing he said was, I know what you're thinking, and I'll agree with you. On the level of fact, there are things that really do appear bad. And as a species, we want to continue and, our, and will continue to evolve past some of our ways of solving disagreements and finding our way. And that's the goal of our species. But right now, inside you and all around you is a power that's more than anything that looks bad and it's more than anything that looks good. Let me introduce you to that power. The next time something happens in your life that you immediately are tempted to say, this is bad, this is really bad. Something happens and immediately you go, this is bad. When that happens, notice it. Hit your internal pause button and wait three days before you decide it's bad, before you allow yourself to get upset about it. Wait three days, and during that three days, turn the volume up on your curiosity. Cause yourself to be curious and ask this question repeatedly. What possible good might be derived from this situation? What possible good might be derived from this situation? That was Sunday. Tuesday. My children's father comes home. He walks in, he's visibly upset. I said, what happened? He said, there was a big layoff at work today. A hundred of us got laid off. I got laid off. <clears throat> My own personal evolution at that point was very much all about me. It was, ah, oh, I'm in school. I might have to quit school. It was all about me. You know, later I would think, gosh, I should have gone, oh, honey, I'm so sorry that happened. You know, <laughs> that was not me in that, <laughs> that point of my evolution. <laughs> I said, oh my gosh, this, we won't have any money. And I started to get very panicky. And then, ding, I said, oh, that guy on Sunday said, nothing is bad unless we think it's bad. This just seems so bad. And I said, what did he say to do? Wait, three days, find our internal pause button was the first thing. Find our internal, where is that? How do I find it? Some of you have never been introduced to the fact that you have an internal pause button. You can decide whether you're going to get upset about it or you're going to delay that for three days. You can't just delay something, you have to do something else. The universe abhors a vacuum. You have to do something else. Get thee behind me means you've turned your attention in a different direction. Three days, okay, so I said, it's Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday at five. If we can't find some good in this by Friday at five, then we'll panic. <laughs> and it was the first time I ever exercised my God-given right to schedule my own panic. You have that power. Now, did panic want to rise up in me over those three days over and over and over again? The same way doubt wanted to rise up in me when the LA Times is printing declining housing market, when the houses on our street are dropping their prices, when my, one of my best friends goes, in this market? Doubt. But I had agreed to hold myself accountable to a possibility, 
in all the realm of possibility, there has to be one possibility where there's somebody who buys it who loves the house the way we loved it. At a fair price, we all feel good about it, and it's easy. And I kept generating connection to that possibility. This was my very first entry of this in 1971. This seems really bad. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to think of what possible good might be derived from the situation. And my husband was very much better at it than I was. He says, well, I drive an hour and a half each way to work. What if I didn't have to drive? See, I wasn't the one driving. He was the one driving. So he said, what if I didn't have to drive so far? I said, well, that'd be good. And the minister had given us one other piece of instruction. While you've turned the volume up on your curiosity, everything that could be good that might happen in this situation, write it down. He didn't know, we didn't have the research then on brain science. What happens when you think it up and then write it down? What that does to the wiring? Shorter drive. That would seem good. What else could be good? Maybe I'd make a little more money. <laughs> That'd be great. More money. Shorter drive, more money. You heard Tony say, half the time, more money. That possibility existed all along the time he was having anaphylactic shock before he realized what he was really allergic to was the work and the confinement of it. It was killing him. He was checking his soul at the door every day he went to work. We needed to uncover that. We needed to unpack that. We needed to get inside that so he could know what was going on inside him. Shorter hours, maybe I could have that. Maybe I could drive less. Maybe I could make a little more money. While we were thinking shorter hours, because we were thinking shorter hours, places that he might work that were closer to us started to occur to us. Because we were thinking shorter drive, places that were within a shorter drive started to occur to us. Who created a job that was an hour and a half away? We did. A part of us didn't believe we could have a job, he could have a job close enough. So we were living from our best thinking. This was an interrupt. It was an interrupt in the pattern of life we had. Now we had a skill set for how to handle what looked like a big problem, but from a different mindset, a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset. And I had to work really hard to not have panic overtake me. We kept working with that, going back to that, reminding each other. We didn't even really know what we were doing, but we did it. And on Thursday, he came home. And one of the places that occurred to us on Wednesday, he went and they were hiring. And he had a better paying job, closer to home, shorter hours, he could ride his bike to work, which he loved doing. And I hadn't suffered waiting for a condition to change before I could feel better. I realized I could feel better because I decided so even in the presence of a condition. And it was my very first experience ever of having a condition without the condition having me.